Hey guys, welcome to my uh, team analysis for the Desvelado Season 5 Draft League. Uh, like I said before, bring on the storm and this is just the beginning. I am in at least one other draft league right now, which uh, the draft analysis will be coming to you very soon. And I have two other options right now that could be uh, another draft league for me. So in total I can be in five draft leagues if anything, everything goes uh, according to plan at the end of this weekend. But not too much about the other draft leagues, let's talk about the DDL, the Desvelado draft league. Uh, well, dra the draft is already completed, that's why you're probably watching this video. And, um, well, let's look, have a look at my team. I have this team drafted in the end, and I will go uh, talk about why I drafted and uh, what my thought process was going uh, around this draft. Um, yeah, well, let's, uh, let's start at the beginning. I started out as uh, the 11th pick from 16, so there were 10 guys before me and there were 5 uh, after me. It was a snake style draft, so after the last one was uh, done picking he, can, he could go again and we're going there all the way back. And it was a point system draft, so every Pokemon had a point. Uh, point total uh, appointed to him or her and um, well that was the cost of the Pokemon we all had 120 points to spend and we needed to draft at least 10 and not more than 11 Pokemon so 10 rounds in and at this point the timer hadn't started so I had all the time to look at my options and uh, some great picks were already gone. Uh, picks like Iron Valiant, Aegis Slash, Garchomp, uh, Sneasler, Dragapult, uh, Tapu Koko were all gone. And I saw Zacian still in the draft pool as being available. And first I had to look because I thought it was the hero of many battle forms, so it wouldn't have the steel type, but it really was the ground version, Zamazenta ground, and the hero of many battle ones was not available at all. And well, <laughs> I had to pick it because here the ground version does have a buff in his stats and has a total, as you can see from the base stats of. 700 points with the ones really sticking out are his defenses at 140 his speed at 128 and his attack at 120 just three weaknesses the fire the fighting and the ground typings and well this beast is just it's just beast it will take you a lot to break it down it can be toxic um, and with a body press available to it, it's just hitting from that 140 defense and the Dauntless Shield ability gives it a plus one on first entry, so it can hit even harder with body press. So you better bring a ghost type. Um, well, that was my first one pick and after that there were five others like said and those five others could pick twice so i was uh, again and i was looking at my three weaknesses fire fighting and ground and i was thinking to myself okay what can cover those three weaknesses uh fighting and ground typing were covered by flying and i just had to think about something with for the fire typings and we all had to pick a mega pokemon and that's what i did for my next pick it's mega charizard oh 
Y. And Mega Charizard Y is, well, as you can see, it does resist the fire and the fighting types. It does have a ground immunity, so it patches up the weaknesses for Zamazenta quite well there. Um, besides that, it has the draft ability. So uh, on entry, it sets the sun up for five turns. Only downside to it is because it's a mega Pokemon, I can't give it the heat rock. So the sun will be up for five turns. Um, looking at its stats, it's got a phenomenal 159 base special attack. Combined with 100 speed is going to be very nice. I think this Mon can do quite some damage, not just on, uh, as a Sunsetter. Um, but it is, as you can see to his type defenses, really weak to Rock types. And Rock type uh, on itself, the Rock moves may not be the biggest problem because Stealth Rock will do 50% on entry. So. When Stealth Worker up, Charizard is not having a good time. Furthermore, Water and Electric weakness. So, um, yeah, looking at Zamazenta, he can't really cover those up. So, I had to give uh, my picks for the third pick because I was going to bed. And first pick was great task because uh, combining it with Charizard Y would be uh, just great because the drought ability will make sure protosynthesis will pop but that one was picked by the number one so I didn't really stand a chance there so I went with the second best option in this case for uh, hazard removal and that's as you have already seen uh, Iron Valiant, of Iron Valiant, uh, Iron Threats, and Iron Threats does give me also that Rock resists, as you can see, four times resisted, so he does not take any damage from Rock type moves. Uh, it covers the Electric type weakness, so um, that's another cover for the Charizard. It does have a fire weakness that Charizard covers, just like the fighting and ground weakness that Charizard covers. Um, I tell you already in advance, I do not really have a way to activate Quirk Drive. So if I want Quirk Drive activated, I have to run Booster Energy. And looking at its stats, a nice 106 speed and good physical, uh, good physical stats. Um, me is going to be a great uh, Stealth Rock Setter and a Hazard Removal Pokemon. Um, it also knows uh, or is able to learn Knockoff, which is always great in a Draft League because uh, items can be really important. So being able to knock those off with Iron Threats is quite nice. And it also is able to learn a Volt Switch, so I can have a nice Volt Turn Core. Ground uh, Step for with moves like Earthquake are great. Uh, steel Typing, which makes it uh, resist a lot of types. So a great third pick overall. And during the day I was waiting and waiting and I saw one uh, Paradox Mon from the past that was still not picked up and given, given I had a Charizard Y I just couldn't help myself and next up I drafted Roaring Moon and if you're not um, really familiar with the Smogon tiers both Crowned Zamazenta and uh, Roaring Moon are already in the Ubers tier so they are banned from regular play just saying not gonna say i'm gonna do great with them because let's face it i'm still a noob but it's quite promising for a team and with roaring moon i also got a water resistant 
which I did not have at the time. So um, yeah, that's co covering my other three type uh, Pokemon right now. Um, and of course I'm gonna draft some more water resists uh, later, but still um, it's a great uh, setup man with a uh, good ability or good uh, way to set up with Dragon Dance on that 119 speed and 139 physical attack it's go it's going to be hard to take down once it's set up the dragon and dark type does leave a fairy uh, weakness for four times so um that's not all that great but given that iron threads and megazard y are both resisting fairy typings i think i already got that covered uh, has a great physical move pool with uh, great coverage so I think a great addition to the team given that I have a Draftmon and it will activate that Protosynthesis on entry when Sun's up so that's great um, and at this point, at this point I was I have spent 18 points on Samazenta and Roaring Moon. I've spent 14 points on the Megazard Y and the Iron Threads. So I wanted to take it a bit slower with my points because I was afraid I will, I would run out before I could get to 10 months. And I was looking through the lower tier months lists and I saw a great uh, value pick that I just wanted to get. And that pick was Hoopa. And I got Hoopa uh, Concealed, I think it's called. At least not the Unbound one. Um, 600 base uh, stats total is very nice because it's a mythical Pokemon. So most of them get 600 all around. And with a 150 special attack it's the first mon after Megazord Y that's clearly a special attacker so that's great as well with 130 based special defense it's also a great special wall and it has so great coverage and the status moves to use it only has two weaknesses with ghost and dark but those are four times weaknesses um, looking at the rest of my team the dark typing is uh, covered with my roaring moon and with the crown samazenta but i didn't really have a ghost resist besides roaring moon so i was sure i needed some more ghost uh, resists but never really got one looking back at it so we'll see how that goes uh, because it's seven points, I thought it would be a great Terra Captain. And what type could I use to cover both my Ghost and Dark weaknesses? And it was a Dark type. Uh, Hoopa also gets moves like uh, Dark Balls. So I can also use it to uh, fire off stab it, step at uh, Dark Pulses. And of course, it covers the, the weaknesses for my two big weaknesses. So there's that. Um, next up was a, another mon that could you uh, make advantage, take advantage of the sun from Megazord, and that's Venusaur. Venusaur does have chlorophyll as his hidden ability. His base speed at 80 isn't really much to look at, but under sun that will double in speed and can no it can't outrun an a Reggie Alecky uh, too bad but it can outrun most other Pokemon as you can see I also gave it uh, I made it a Terra Captain I gave it uh, Terra Grass and Terra Steel so um, what I didn't mention with Hoopa by the way uh, his other Terra type was the Ghost type uh, we can only use two types, one stab and one non-stab move, or terror type, so there. Uh, looking at the weaknesses, uh, the 
Ice, Fire, Psychic and Flying weaknesses were already kind of covered. The Fire weakness of course with the Roaring Moon, the Ice by Zamazenta, Crown and Megazord. Well, Megazord decently, not very well. Um, the Psychic weakness was covered by the Roaring Moon and the Iron Threads, but I did not have a Flying uh, resist. Uh, besides Iron Thread, so I will be picking up something after the, the Venusaur for Flying Weakness. Well, like I said, I mainly drafted Venusaur for his Chlorophyll ability. Um, under Sun, it's base 160 speed, so that's already a massive. With a 100 special attack, it can use uh, direct solar beams it has a knockoff uh, I have the ability to run knockoff on it it's um, a grounded poison poison type so uh, switching in Venusaur will suck up the poison spot of the toxic spikes from my opponent if they decide to bring them um, and it's uh, great coverage since I didn't have a poison type yet or a grass type. So, um, yeah, that's the Venusaur. Next up, I wanted to uh, keep my speed up, up uh, uh, quite a bit. And I wanted a uh, fairy typing. And looking at it, I had two options in my head for uh, a fairy type uh, because both of those fairy types would be able to put up sticky webs and in the end I decided not to go for Slurpuff but for Ribombi and Ribombi like I said um, like <laughs> well most things I've already said about it it's a fairy type so it's a dragon immunity which I didn't have at the time um, it's got a great speed stat 1124 so it actually is without some my second fastest Pokemon after Zamazenta. It's a physical or special attacker which I did not have many of uh, at the time. Well, it was starting to balance out a bit with this, so mostly that. Um, physical stats leave to be desired, but not gonna, really gonna use it as a physical uh, hitter. Uh, ability wise not all that great but like I said it, it's mainly here to set up webs to resist a, a dragon type and just his spam fairy type moves like moonblast or bug type moves when a dark type is on the field next up um, I wanted to draft an electric type and most of the time I wanted to draft you want to draft uh, fast electric types. So on top of my list was Heliolisk. But little did I know, some guy before me also wanted Heliolisk and I was just one round too late to pick it up. So I had to think fast and I went with an electric type that's not fast but still quite fun to use and that's Electros. Electros is a pure electric type, but because of Levitate, it does not have any weaknesses. So, if a opponent wants to hit my Electros with a ground type move and hit it for uh, super effective damage, it first has to take off the Levitate ability. Um, it can be done with an ability like a Mold Breaker, which ignores abilities, but not many Pokemon have mold breaker so in that case a big opponent for her uh, or yeah big th threat for him will be Excadrill but only one uh, team can draft it or you have to bring it down with moves like gravity or smackdown which are not all that great moves and it takes up a move slot so if you want to run it go ahead be my guest um, Electros is a Pokemon that can use knockoff coming from a 115 base attack is hitting quite hard uh, it's also a both a U-turn and a Volt Switch user so I'm really building up a uh, 
Volt Switch Core with Iron Threads, uh, Roaring Moon, Ribombi, and now Electros. And Electros gives me the ability to go for a uh, slow switch. Um, let's say my opponent goes for their own Volt Switch or U-Turn or goes for a Priority Parting Shot. They bring something else in. I go for a slow U-Turn after them and I can bring something in that uh, has a great matchup against the Pokemon that comes out. So that's a, a nice uh, advantage to have. Um, defensively, uh, well, kind of in the middle there. It's not all that great defensively, but it's not all that weak also. So it's just going to be annoying to chip it down because you don't really have something to hit it uh, all that effectively with. Um, so yeah, just uh, a quite an annoying one to take down and we were ending we're getting near the end of the draft I had two picks I still had to make but at this point at looking at my point total I was already sure I would be drafting 11 Pokemon and I was still missing a bulky water type and one of the bulkiest water types there is is Jellicent with the water absorb ability I even get a water immunity because of the ghost typing which Hoopa also has but uh, Jellison doesn't have a 4 time weakness to anything it's also immune to fighting and normal typing um, looking at his stats 100 in HP 105 in special defense makes it a great special wall with 85 base special attack, it can also hit force a nice bit of damage. It has great coverage uh, moves. It has the ability to use water spout, but coming from a base uh, 60 speed is not all that great because for water spout, uh, you want to outspeed your opponent because uh, the less damage you have on you, the more damage water spout does. So, um, yeah, cry a, a great defensive Pokemon for me, which gives me, uh, besides crowned Zamazenta a, and the Hoopa, of course, for his special uh, special defense, a great uh, wall. Um, yeah, and during uh, my draft, I was kind of on the fence about what I wanted for my last picks. I had Leafeon in mind for somewhat more of a special or a physical wall and uh, also a chlorophyll abuser but already having Venusaur in that role was kind of tricky for me so um, I wanted another rapid spinner at least because right now only Iron Threads was a rapid spinner and I wanted a typing I did not have yet and in the end I went for Cryogonal and honestly before Draft League, Cryogonal was like, yeah, a Pokemon that's there. Um, yeah, not really paying attention to it. But um, I really think it's underrated right now. After drafting it, looking into it, um, it went for six points, which is not all that much, given that Venusaur, for example, uh, goes for 10 points, uh, Rimbombi goes for nine. And Cryogonal goes for 6. It does have 4 weaknesses because it's a pure Ice type. And Ice types are known to be a bit, uh, well, weak. Having much uh, weaknesses. But looking at its stats, I never knew it had 135 special defense. I always thought his speed was his biggest uh, stat. But apparently not it's a great special wall uh, with 105 speed and 95 special attack it's quite able to hit fast and hard um, with moves like freeze dry it can super effectively hit water type pokemon with rapid spin i can get rid of hazards and because of levitate i do not even take uh, spike sticky web or toxic spike damage the only thing that's 
underwhelming are his physical stats with 50 both in attack and defense but not really gonna use it for his uh, physical attributes um, I had well um, let me think I think I had seven points left and after all that I thought I had uh, too big of a fire weakness I have five Pokemon weak to fire type moves with the Crown Zamazenta, with the Iron Threads, with Venusaur, Rimbombi, and now Cryogonal. I just had three regular resists, resistances with the Mega Charizard, with Roaring Moon, and let's see. Um, Sword, Roaring Moon. Oh, Jellicent, of course. Um, so I wanted another fire resist and with just two rapid spinners uh, I would have liked another rapid spin Pokemon and wouldn't you know for just a measly three points there was Turtonator and with Turtonator I have a 135 defensive Mon which is after Iron Threads and Crown Zamazenta, the highest physical defensive Mon. It has a four times resistance to both Fire and Grass. So I patched up that Fire weakness quite well there. Um, it's a slow Dragon type Pokemon, which mainly uses his special attack. I used uh, Turtonator a lot in my uh, Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Uh, playthroughs and even though it's uh, not that fast it, I like using it so yeah I was kind of yeah and uh, a bit enthusiastic about a three point last round pickup uh, with his shell armor ability it does not get uh, hit with a critical hit which is also nice um, rapid spinner again can't uh, you can't say that enough, uh, apparently. So, um, yeah, that rounded up my draft. Um, I, I draw, like I said in the beginning, I hope I will be in five leagues at the time over in a couple of weeks. Uh, mostly because I wanted to get a lot of experience in uh, at least the least amount of time. And, um, well, with uh, this draft done, you can look at uh, the theme uh, on your screen, by the way. Um, this will be League 2 out of 5 I have joined. And you already know I joined the Burn Tower League. Um, get, play three matches in the Little Cup season there. And, well, things are going pretty well. Um, this is League 2 that I'm sure of, I'm joining, I'm going to play matches in and later this weekend I'll upload a, another team builder or not a team builder, a uh, draft analysis for League 3 I already am sure I'll be joining. Um, yeah, the, in that uh, dra draft analysis I will be telling you if I was able to get invited or picked for the last two uh, leagues I am hoping to join and if that goes through I will be telling you that in the next video. Uh, for now this is the team that will take on the Desvelado Draft League. Um, really looking forward to it. I've already spent some time in the chats there and those uh, people there are really nice people. Um, looking like they know what they're doing and ready to have some great fun with uh, with us on this journey. So, um, yeah, nothing more to say than let's go. Let's do this. I'm hoping for a great playoff run in the end. Maybe I can make playoffs. We'll see. Um, yeah, one thing left to say is uh, up the Vivalence.